In FreeAgent, you can file micro-entity FRS 105 accounts to company's house and a corporation tax return CT600 form to HMRC. This is done within the individual free agent licenses, but the initial setup must be done within your practice dashboard. This is what we call global settings, as these will affect all your limited company clients. To access the settings, click on the name of your practice in the top right corner and then click on settings. Within the settings menu, click on the end of year tab. Here, you can decide if you want to display the abbreviated report and a CT600 tabs within the end of year module. Underneath, you can decide whenever you want to include the accountant's report or not. If you decide to do so, you will be able to input and modify its content. At the very bottom of this page, you can create a default email template that will be used when final accounts are sent to the client for review and approval. As you can see at the bottom, you can use a variety of tags that will be replaced with the actual data when you go to a specific client account. For example, company name tag will be replaced with the actual name of the company for which you want to make the submission. Please note that as these are global settings, it will apply to all of your limited company clients for which you want to file final accounts and corporation tax return. Once you are happy with the content of this page, click Save Changes. Once we are happy with the global settings, it is time to start the preparation process. Most of the work should be done for us by this stage, as the bookkeeping that we or the client do populates the report automatically. If you want to review the allocations of transactions, go to Accounting and click on Reports tab. You will be able to extract the trial balance and the normal ledger report to review all normal codes and allocations of individual transactions. Normal ledger report can be accessed by going to the Show Transactions tab. Here, you will need to select the accounting year under consideration and then in a second drop-down list, select Show All Accounts. This will display all of the normal codes with individual transactions included in them. The report itself can be exported in a CSV format for further analysis. Here you can also click on individual transactions and amend them if needed. Once you are happy with the allocation of transactions to individual normal codes, return to the reports page and click on final accounts and select the accounting year for which you want to make a filing. Please note that the filing to company's house within free agent can only be done for micro entities under the FRS 105 standards. Here we can see a set of criteria that a company must meet in order to qualify as a micro entity. At least two of the following three thresholds must be met. Turnover less than 632,000, balance sheet total less than 316,000, and a fewer than 10 employees as an average in a given accounting period. For companies that do not meet at least two of these thresholds, the filing will need to be done outside of free agent. The rest of the video will assume that the company meets the criteria and can file within free agent. If you are filing your first set of accounts since your incorporation, you will only see the numbers that correspond to the current accounting period, as you can see in this example. If, however, you are filing a set of accounts for a company where the filings for prior years have been done in a separate software, you will be able to input the comparative numbers for the prior year by clicking on this tab here. Please note that the comparative figures will not populate automatically from the opening balances, and neither will these comparative numbers overwrite any of the opening balances. These numbers will only be displayed as comparative figures and will not affect any other area of the software. Let's go to the accounting year 2020-2021 for which I'll show you the rest of the process. Most of the headings on this report can be drilled down to see which normal codes make up a given figure. It will apply to both the profit and loss and the balance sheet figures. We can see how the fixed assets figure is made up of individual capital assets and their accumulated depreciation. On this page, we can also add the average number of employees and any additional notes to the accounts. To do that, we need to click on Manage Notes and Settings. Average number of employees is a compulsory note and it sits at the top of the page. 
other notes in a free format are positioned below. For guidance of what to put in these boxes or to see examples, click on a knowledge base article here. The article describes in greater detail what type of information to include in these notes. Once notes and comparative figures in the accounts are included, we can look at the corporation tax return. To access the computation, click on Taxes and then select Corporation Tax. Here you will see tax returns for different accounting periods. This should correspond roughly with the accounting periods of final accounts. Select the period under consideration and click on it. Please note that the ability to file the corporation tax return is only available for accounting periods ending on or after 27th of October 2020. This is why when we select the period ending 30th of April 2020, as you can see here, the CT600 form will not be available and the submission will not be possible. Let us go to the accounting period that we'll be able to file. As you can see in a period ending after the 27th of October 2020, the CT600 tab is visible at the top here. The computation below takes the operating profit figure, adds disallowable expenses and depreciation and deducts capital allowances and other adjustments to end up with the profits chargeable to corporation tax, PCTCT. It then splits the amount and apportions it between two fiscal years. In this example, the corporation tax is at 19% in both periods. But this will obviously be necessary when there is a change in the corporation tax rate in the future years. Below, we can see a breakdown of disallowable expenses. Free agent considers the entire nominal code and not the individual transactions as allowable or disallowable. To mark the code as disallowable, we need to go to the settings menu and click on accounting categories. Only nominal codes within admin expenses and cost of sales can be marked as disallowable and only if there were no transactions posted into these nominal codes. You can also mark the code as disallowable when you are creating it. Simply click on add new and select either admin expenses or cost of sales category. By default, the new category will have the box ticked, making it allowable for tax purposes. To mark it as disallowable, simply untick the box. Here, you can also select the reporting name for the new code by selecting it from the drop-down menu. This will become an IAX BRL tag applied to the code when the accounts are submitted to HMRC. Let's go back to the corporation tax return and explore other areas. Below, we can see the section for capital allowances. When assets are added to free agent, they are automatically assigned to annual investment allowance. This can, however, be changed for each individual asset. To do that, we need to go to Reports within the Accounting tab on the main ribbon and click Capital Assets. Here, we'll see all the assets in the business. To amend the tax treatment of any specific asset, simply click on the asset name. This page will show us more detail about that specific asset. Here, we can see the tax and accounting values and how they are derived. At the bottom of this box here, there is a button that says Edit Tax Treatment. Here, we can select a different treatment and save changes. Based on our selection, FreeAgent will recalculate the capital allowances figure and amend the corporation tax and CT600. As you can see, we are back in a corporation tax computation screen. Under the capital allowances, we have our last adjustment box, trading losses. FreeAgent supports losses brought forward from previous years, but does not offer support for losses that are to be carried back to previous periods. <clears throat> Furthermore, now there is no support for the Form CT600A, so any companies with overdrawn director's loan account will need to file the return outside of free agent. The functionality is however currently being built and we should expect support for CT600A within the next couple of months. Once all of the adjustments are processed, we can review and submit the final accounts and corporation tax return to Companies House and HMRC. We'll explore this in the next video.